When you think about the Army's officer corps, a useful analogy is to think of it as a fixed capital investment, maybe something like a road or a bridge. Uh, think about the Brooklyn Bridge, for example. It was built in 1883, in the era of the carriage. No automobiles, no subway trains. Yet John Roebling, its principal architect and engineer, designs this thing that's still standing 125 years after it was built. The requirements that we've placed upon this structure have changed across time, but it's equal to those challenges. Its purpose was enduring. It's a bridge. And the officer corps is like that. Uh, it's a bridge to the future. It's a leadership bridge to the future because of what's at stake. The officer corps has got to be constituted the right way. What up? If it's going to endure and be able to do what it is that we envision for it, not just today, not just tomorrow, but years into the future. For the Army, the stakes are really high for a sessioning. About fight. Unlike the business world, where if they get an accession's decision wrong, they can replace it. The Army, it has limited lateral entry. It's stuck with the talent that it brings in. So it's gonna live with that talent, both now and for some 20, 30 years into the future. For most of the post-World War II period, we could expect about 20% of an officer corps to come from West Point, 70% or so to come from ROTC, and then OCS, Officer Candidate School, would pull roughly 10% into the Army out of the enlisted ranks. But when the wall fell and our mission changed and we were supposed to pay a peace dividend by drawing down, uh, the Army started to pull resources away from ROTC. It cut its cadre by half. And the consequence of that then for the Army, as it started to draw down on ROTC, it still had to meet its accession mission. And so it turned to the Officer Candidate School, OCS. OCS was kind of the valve. And it got open just a little bit more every year until by 2000. We had doubled it. By 2007, we had quadrupled it. When we brought this to the Army's attention, leaders were stunned. With your commissioning sources, you can lay them out along a spectrum, a spectrum of rigor, if you will, and how they screen, vet, and call. A 12-week program on one end of the spectrum is OCS. A 47-month program on the other end of the spectrum is the military cabinet. The more comprehensive the screening, the betting, and culling, the more likely you are to get officer accessions right. And so one of the challenges that OCS faces is it has very little time to, to really make sure that it's actually gotten it right. Another significant accessions challenge is getting people interested into the military in the first place. Once you get a kid interested in the military, then he's got a choice between at least four branches of service, the Air Force, the Navy, the Marines, and the Army. What we have found through studies is that the public views the services across two intersecting spectrums. One is elite to ordinary, and the other is brawny to intellectual. When you look at the quadrant that has the sort of brainy and the elite, the Air Force falls squarely into that. They've been able to brand themselves as the cyberspace guys. The guys are going to fight Cyber Command. Titan 1 4. Unmanned aircraft is identifying enemy sniper. And so it's very easy to attract people into that. And the Air Force typically meets its accession mission uh, first among the, the branches. When you move down to the, to the lower left hand quadrant, um, we got the Marines that dominate that. They're elite, but they do sort of brawn activities. But that elite component, I mean, you look at some of these commercials, you just see the, the Marines just they're tapping their weapons on concrete, and that's all they do, but it's just such an amazing commercial, and it really just stokes this notion of an elite force. In the upper right-hand quadrant, you have the Navy. When you think of the Navy and what the Navy's done, everyone thinks Top Gun. They have submarines, high-tech equipment, uh, sophisticated ships. And then the Army's left with sort of the, the scraps. 
It seems that in America's mind, we map out to ordinary and sort of brawny, not particularly elite, not particularly high tech, um, not particularly the best turf to be on. And of course, it's not representative either. But what does America know? They know what comes through them, mostly through pop culture. And that can be a real problem for the Army. Perception's a reality to people. We have a man down! And so the first step the Army needs to make from a strategic marketing perspective is rebranding itself. The Army has to look for ways in which it can make its message clean and clear that we have a different lifestyle. You can certainly go crawl through the streets of Baghdad, kick in doors, but you can also do a lot of other things for the Army, serving as a finance officer, as a chemical officer, as an engineer, and other things that might be rewarding to you. As the Army thinks about a strategic marketing plan, it needs to understand the generation that it's after. And the generation right now is the millennial generation. This generation is interested in doing something big for the country, doing something beyond themselves. They're not interested in the three-car garage and the white picket fence. They're interested in leaving a mark and doing something that matters. In many ways, they are a rich target population for high potential talented officers. What the Army has to do is get its messaging in consonance with what will really appeal to these young people. There's only one place we really add new talent to the Army. We can improve talent with development, but the only place we add new talent is the sessions. When you add good leadership in that domain, what you're really doing is making a commitment to raise all the Army's boats, all of its units in the future. Do we want to make an investment today to have a better Army tomorrow? Tough choice to make in a war, but the choice needs to be made if we want to go into America and attract the best and brightest young folks to come join the officer corps.